Hey guys, welcome to this video on the C programming language. So in this video, I want to write a program that creates random multiplication problems and asks the user for the answer and then determines how many problems the user got right and how many problems the users got wrong. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing I'm going to do is write a description. So here we're going to write a description of what our program does. So again, uh, this program uh, prints, we'll say prints out random uh, multiplication problems. And determines how many problems the user got right and wrong. Okay, and maybe I put this on another line here. Okay, so there we go. Now let's go ahead and get started. First thing I'm going to do is include some libraries that I know we're going to need. So we're going to need uh, stdio.h, and we're going to need stdlib.h, and we're going to need time.h as well. All right, let's go ahead and create our main function. So integer main. And we have to return an integer value, so I'm going to return 0 here. Now let's uh, declare some variables that we need. So um, we're going to de declare the variables we need. So we're going to need variables x and y. And these are going to be the variables that we're using to uh, multiply together. So I'm going to say the variables that we will multiply together. All right, then we're going to need another variable. We're going to call it answer. And of course, answer is going to be equal to x times y. Then we're going to also want the um, user's input. So I'm going to say user input here. And so this is the user's answer. And we're going to want to know how many problems they got right. So I just create a variable called right and set it equal to zero. And this is the number of problems the user uh, got right. And then we're going to have another integer variable called wrong and set it equal to zero. And this, of course, will be the number of problems the user got wrong. All right, and then we're going to want the number of questions. So I'm going to say num questions here and set it equal to 10 for now. And this will be the number of problems we have. And then because we're going to have to loop through, uh, we're going to have to loop through each question. We're going to need a, a variable that can help us iterate through that. So I'm just going to call it i. And I think we are ready to go. All right. So first thing I'm going to do is create a for loop. And it's going to run from i equals 0. It's going to run while i is less than the number of questions that we want. And then i is going to increment by 1 each time. OK, in here, what we're going to do is we're going to print um, the problem. So we're going to print the problem. And our problem is going to look something like this, something like 4 times 5 equals a uh, question mark. All right. And so, of course, we're not going to have it print 4 times 5 uh, 10 times, the number of questions. We're going to have it be the variable x and y. So let's go ahead and initialize those variables. So we're going to initialize variables x and y to some random, well, it's going to be pseudo-random, actually. Uh, pseudo-random. Random value. All right, so x is going to equal rand. That's the random function that we're going to be using to give us our random number. And y is going to equal some random number as well. 
and again, instead of it being 4, we're going to do percent %d here and percent %d here, and we're going to use the variables x and y. And then we're going to want it to print a new line for every problem that's printed to the console. So let's go ahead and run this for now just to see if it runs. And it does. I wish I could make this window bigger for you guys here. Um, let's see. Nope. All right. Well, here I have 41 times 18,467 for the first problem. And the second problem, we have uh, 6,334 times 26,500. So these are some really big numbers that I can't do in my head uh, very quickly. So let's go ahead and uh, reduce those numbers to maybe numbers ranging from 0 to uh, zero to 20. Well, let's do 0 to 10 for now. 0 to 10. So all we have to do is use the mod operator here, and we can mod that random function by 10. And that's going to give us numbers from 0 uh, to 9. So let's run this. All right, so now we get uh, 1 times 7, 4 times 0, 9 times 4, 8 times 8, and 2 times 4, which is great. Well, what you'll notice is I'll run this again, and we'll get the same numbers. So, yep. Well, uh, first one I got 1 times 7, we got 4 times 0 now, uh, 9 times 4, and 8 times 8. I think that's the same. Let's try it one more time. Um, yeah, so it's giving us the same numbers over and over again, even though we're using this random function here. And the reason why is because these random numbers are, again, pseudo-random values. They're not actually random. But to make it uh, a little bit more random, we're going to use the srand function. And it's going to take in time. OK. And this should make our numbers here a little bit more random. So I'm going to run it again. And so now we get 8 times 6, and 5 times 2, and then 0 times 5. So already the numbers are different. Let's run it again. Yep, so now we get 7 times 7 first, and then 3 times 6. All right, perfect. Um, next up I want to do, I want to make it look a little bit better. So I want to, um, to have numbers at the start of each problem. So what I'm going to have is percent %d, and then that. And then we're going to use i, the variable i, uh, because it's the the uh, variable that's being iterated through, right? Or it's, it's being incremented, and it's uh, it's going to basically run 10 times. So it's going to show 10 problems starting from 0. So it's going to go 0 to 9. So let's go ahead and run this and see how it looks now. All right, perfect. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. But I actually wanted to start from 1 instead of 0. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add 1 here. And now we should see it start at 1 and end at 10. And we do. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And we still have our random problems. OK. Uh, next up, we want to initialize the answer. So the answer we said is equal to x times y. So that's the correct answer. And let's see. Next, we want to do is maybe ask the user's input. So before I put, do I want to put a new line here? How about we, instead of the question mark, we get rid of the question mark. We get rid of the new line. And what we're going to do is we're going to ask the user, ask the user for um, their answer. So all we have to do is scan f percent d the user input and let's run this all right so now we get the first question is three times seven equals and then we're going to put the answer here this is 21 uh let's see what's happening here hmm. all right look like we broke something so let's try to figure that out um i forgot to put the ampersand sign here so let's try this again so now we have 5 times 6, which is 30. Press Enter. All right. 9 times 6 is um, 54. So let's press Enter. 6 times 4 is 24. And 3 times 7 is 21. 4 times 8 is 8. So everything looks to be working properly now. 
uh, what we need to do is we need to check to see if this if the input is correct or not so if the user input is equal to the answer then the number of problems that it has that we got correct increments right so correct is going to increment by one each time else if uh, that's not the case so if the user input does not equal the answer then the number of problems we have incorrect um, increments and we don't have a variable called correct so I need to change this here and say right that's what we are using for the number of problems the user got right so we're going to use right plus plus so again um, the user input is equal to if the user input is equal to the answer then um, the number of problems that they got right increments by one and then else if the user's input does not equal the answer then the number of problems that they got wrong increments by one all right so there we go those are the variables that we're using and that's what we're using them for okay now when we're done with all of this we want to print the number of problems uh, that the user got correct or uh, right and the number of problems that the user got incorrect or wrong okay so here we're gonna say uh, you got you got percent D questions right and percent D questions wrong okay we're gonna do a new line here and of course it's right and wrong are the two variables that we're using that we're gonna print out so let's go ahead and run this and this should pretty much be it so let's see number one we have six times five I'm gonna put 30 9 times 1 is 9, 6 times 4 is 24, but I'm going to put 12, uh, 4 times 6 is also 24, but I'm going to put 45, and 9 times 3 is 27, and then 6 times 2 is 12, uh, 2 times 2 is 4, 1 times 0 is 0, 6 times 6 is 36, 5 times 5 is 25, so uh, we got two, oh, we got 8 questions right and 2 questions wrong. And so that's basically it, and that's what it shows here. You got eight questions right and two questions wrong. So anyways, guys, I hope you really enjoyed this video. Um, if we want to change the uh, number of problems, all we have to do is just change that variable here. So maybe we want uh, just, maybe we want 100 problems, right? So we can run this like that. And we can just uh, keep putting in some random number, or non-random number in this case. And you can see this is going to keep going on until we get to 100, which is really nice. Uh, to do and to practice our multiplication or if you know somebody who uh, needs help with multiplication this is a great program that they can use uh, for that so anyways guys um, thanks for watching uh, please leave any questions you have in the comment section below please leave likes uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and if you found this helpful please share it and maybe it could be helpful for others and I'll be sure to have this code in my or on my GitHub. So I'll leave a link to, to that below. And as always, guys, again, thanks for watching. And I'll see you all in the next video.